Good morning and welcome to Babbles Travelling Yarns. This is my little podcast um, where I talk about uh, knitting and some spinning and some politics sometimes and um, yarns. Today is mainly going to be about spinning. I have one woven project I want to show you. I have a pair of socks I've just finished. I have a couple of really cute projects that I'm working on, actual knitting projects that I have had time to knit. And I'm going to talk about two events that I attended. Um, I'm going to be talking about um, Atlantic Knitscape, where I, I hadn't mentioned the type of yarns that I got at Atlantic Knitscape, so I'm going to go over those really quickly. And then onto the big one, which was woolen. Um, yeah, just going to give you a sneak peek. Gee, just. <laughs> Um, I'm also going to be doing at the end of the show a little um, shop update uh, going through some of the yarn. I have over 130 skeins of yarn in my shop right now. Uh, the shop update went live last night at 8 o'clock. There is plenty on there. So if you haven't had a chance, pop over and look. The links are in the down bar. That was my first shop update in months and it was all the stock um, from Woolen. So perfect. So that'll hopefully keep me going for the whole summer. <laughs> We'll see how keen you are. If you clear me out, ugh, I'm gonna be so mad. <laughs> <Only messing. laughs> Please help yourself. Um, so I just wanna talk a little bit first about what I'm wearing. So this is the beautiful uh, Frozen Shawl. It was a Frozen Mystery Cow by uh, Nordic Stitches. And this was knit for me. Um, it was, I, I gave, okay. So Barbara from Knitting I Love gave this yarn, or knit this beautiful shawl. And she borrowed, um, I borrowed it as a sample for the, um, for woolen. And it is beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. I love, oh, I love it so much. It is knit out of my um, cotton, uh, bless your cotton sock space. In the colorways, the same moon and August sunset. Um, August Sunset is available in the shop as a bamboo and as a merino, but I think um, the cotton socks is sold out. But there is plenty of the same moon, I believe, in um, cotton socks. So thank you so much, Barbara. I just wanted to show it off. So Barbara has an online shop as well, where she <clears throat> makes um, knitting accessories out of this um, interesting kind of um, felt. This is a different type of fabric she's got, which are tags. She's got a little, little heart, a little sheep on it. And I particularly, so she has some of these tags which you just attach onto your work. You can put them onto your jumper or a hat or it just is, adds a little finishing touch. But she's got these amazing ones for, say if you're giving it as a present, it has hand washing details on it. Genius. So, you know, just for those people who might not want to hand wash. So I'm wearing this this morning. It is Saturday morning. No, no, it's Wednesday morning. <laughs> Wednesday morning, uh, the, the 30th of May, I think. Yeah. I'm also wearing, for the first time, I should have been wearing yesterday, really. This is a, um, a top called Summer on You, and it was a gifted pattern to me. I think Carmen gifted it to me. Um, the yarn as well was a beautiful gift from my friend Laura from Woolly Wolverine and I'm wearing it. It is a really simple, beautiful pattern, gives you lovely shape. Um, the only thing is I think um, I didn't follow the pattern properly and the armholes are very tight which makes this kind of go out like this. Um, I'm going swimming later on in the river which is why I have my swimming suit on. Beautiful weather, but I'm taking a couple of people with me, so I was like, well, might as well just get dressed and then I can sort myself out um, over there. So I'm all prepared, but it is a little chilly um, because the weather hasn't heated up just yet, but it's going to be a scorcher. So I took a few days off after, uh, I took a week off after Woolen. I was planning on going to Rhodes, to the Rhodes retreat. Beardy Chill has organised a, a retreat in Rhodes. He's having one next year as well and um but my cancels got my flight got cancelled at the last like about two weeks before and i was in the middle of woolen prep and everything was kind of going a bit so um the they're, they offered me different flights but they were really inconvenient times and i would have had to change all my annual leave and james would have had to change all of his annual leave 
So we just, and financially we, we couldn't really afford to change it because the flights were going to be different prices and then, oh, it was a mess. Anyway, long story short, we didn't end up going and I'm actually, I'm upset that we didn't go because of all the people that were going, but at the same time, I have been almost unconscious for the last couple of days. So I'm actually really glad that I just stayed at home and ch chilled out. And also it meant I was able to photograph all the yarn and get it up on the shop, so that's nice. Um, so yeah, let's talk a little bit about my project. So I have been knitting these particular socks for the last, I think I cast, yes, I cast them on at Edinburgh Yarn Festival. So this is, this was a gradient sock set. Um, I knit I knit socks two at a time from the top down. I um, this was a gradient sock set from Yarn Over New York, and I bought it a, a little bit more than a year ago on my way back from Tasmania to Edinburgh Yarn Festival last year, 2017. And I cast them on at Edinburgh Yarn Festival 2018 on the on the airplane. So I cast on using a really, um, I doubled up the, knit, the knitting, I doubled up the needles. So I, I knit these on 2.5 needles. So I doubled up the needles and I did an, uh, a Norwegian cast on because I'm having trouble, I mostly have trouble with socks with like a stretchy, like to get it over your foot. Like none of my cast on seem stretchy enough. So I decided to, I can't remember who told me, I think it was someone on the International Vir Virtual Knit Nights. I think it was, it normally is. <laughs> All of my genius moments come from somebody else telling me on VKN. <laughs> but um, it just makes this really lovely, stretchy, open um, uh, rib. And the rib does not fall down your foot at all. It's ju you just do it, the cast on in the doubled needles and then you pull out one of the needles and then you just continue with your rib as normal. So it just gives you that starting cast on is super elastic um, and it doesn't look weird on your foot. I have been wearing these. They weren't, I wore them everywhere. <laughs> I finished them at Atlantic Knitscape. I cast them on and I put them straight on and they've been turning my feet green since. <laughs> I blocked them when I came home from Woolen because I was wearing them to Woolen as well and I um, a lot of green came out of this because it's so intensely green but it's lovely oh my gosh James whoa guys what has happened beans really wanted the milk he really did like this was an empty it was empty wow my little tiger. <laughs> he has his head as breakfast. Yeah. Thanks. Now, James, you yeah. know what you're supposed to do. What? I'm filming. Oh, sorry. I'm supposed to stay inside, make no noise, pretend that I don't exist. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I'll leave. Although that was delightful. <laughs> Poor. Everyone together now? Poor James. Anyway. <laughs> I jump, James. Stop. <laughs> no. I don't know if you heard any of that. It's so funny. <laughs> Sob. I've got a lot to get through, so I've got to carry on. So yeah, these um are beautiful. I loved them. I just this is a 30 uh, 60 stitch sock. So I cast on 60 stitches and the ribbing is a three by one rib. And then I went down the leg um, and then I did a mini heel flap and gusset. Now, um, this is taken from Mina Phillips, um, all of Mina Phillips' new designs and sock clubs. Um, she has designed this heel and this little mini heel flap adjustment situation. So I think you're supposed to do a garter bit here and I totally forgot about that and it would have been a lot easier. Um, but uh, they're all in her new patterns in her sock clubs. Uh, that is the Knitting Expat if you're interested. Uh, but I wanted to do a garter heel because it seems so cushy and squishy and it is, it's lovely to wear. I th These are actually the first pair of socks that fit me properly. This mini heel flap, amazing. Actually, no, the heel flaps do do the job, but I don't enjoy knitting them. 
I, I enjoy knitting the short row heels, but a mini heel flap, I can totally deal with. It just feels like the gusset never ends. I'm just like, oh my God, am I not here yet? How am I not here yet? Oh. It just, this part of a heel flap, you know, where you're increasing or whatever. Oh, kill me now, it's so boring. Anyway, sorry. Personal opinions reflected in this podcast. Ah. But this mini heel flap and then a short row heel, it's amazing. I love it. I'm going to do it for everything now. So cute. So I finished this at Knitscape. And what else? Um, so you probably, if you haven't seen my little vlog on Knitscape, you, um, you won't have seen this piece. <laughs> this piece was a little demonstration piece. Um, Catherine asked me to bring up the uh, rigid head loom that I have, which is a 16 inch Ashford rigid head loom. I'm going to cover up this. A little side cleavage there. Um, <laughs> I love this shawl so much. Um, so Catherine asked me to bring up Catherine Hastings, by the way, who is Atlantic Knitscape um, uh, Ireland, I think. I think that's her handle on Instagram, um, and also the Facebook group. If you're interested in attending any of the Atlantic Knitscape, there are a few rooms left for the September um, retreats. So I'm just drinking coffee in Remembrance's pottery mug logo mugs I want them anyway my logo will be really cute in a mug now this is what I'm saying that's all I'm saying that's all I'm saying, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> I know shipping it abroad is like really <laughs> dangerous <laughs> breakages but yeah um so anyway I brought up my rigid head loom and I said you know what I'm gonna and I didn't have a chance to warp it so I threw a, a few skeins in and I was like oh yeah they'll go together and boy did they so I bought a I bought a skein back at Sheep's Head Festival from Eve Chambers Textiles, um, who was Eve and Apple, I believe, and she changed her name to Eve Eve Chambers Textiles. And she was oh, she's such a wonderful lady. I'm I'm so glad I got to catch up with her at Woolen as well. So I got this skein of cotton. Um, so it was Pima cotton, and I think it's actually the exact same base as some cotton that I got from my friend at Christie from Granite Creations. Uh, so I got her. She actually just, I think she, did she give it to me or did I pay her? Christy, did I pay you for this? I'm losing track of all of this nonsense. Oh gosh, I hope I did. Anyway, everyone should pop over to Granite Creations. Um, she's got a podcast and a beautiful Etsy shop. Oh, here it is. Oh, it used to be, oh yeah, Little Bee Accessories at Etsy.com. But she's changed that to Granite Creations, Little Bee Christy. So I got some of the DK Pure Cotton in Rose, I think. DK Pima Cotton, 200 meters. I think this is called Rose, Rose something, so, I don't know, I can't remember. Anyway, I did a plain weave stripey scarf. So I warped it during the uh, Knitscape, uh, during the first day, which was the Saturday. I warped it in the morning of the Saturday in about an hour. And I was doing it around everybody and everyone like was able to see. It was a huge, it was a really long warp. I didn't anticipate it being so long. My God, it's so long. It's about a meter, about two meters, two meters long, I'd say. Um, yeah. So I just taped it to some pub tables and just kept going. And it was really interesting. Um, I did film some of it and it is in the, the Atlantic Netscape podcast. Um, and then I, I was weaving and weaving and weaving and then Kate from Hawthorne Cottage Craft wanted to, um, wanted to have a go. So I can't remember which part is Kate's and which part is mine because she's perfect. <laughs> like I cannot tell. So we did pretty much half and half, I think. Um, I'm trying to look at the edges to see which one, which edge, edges are a little bit. I really can't. Can do you tell that this, this might be Kate's just there, but actually that might be mine too because no edge, no edges are perfect. See the way it kind of bubbles out there. See, it could be any of us. Could be either of us. She's so great. She picked this up like in seconds. Fabulous. Obviously a great teacher. She was, she was weaving for a couple of hours and then I came home and I was weaving at, or we went swimming and we went uh, there was a yarn sale and I was weaving and I was so close to the end on this and I was like I have to finish so I finished weaving this at 12 o'clock 
like on Saturday night. Um, so I started, I, I, I kind of worked it up at nine o'clock ish on Saturday and then I cast, we basically, I finished weaving at, at 12 o'clock Then I got up the next day, came down and tied off all the knots and cut it off the loom at about 10. So it took maybe 26 hours, including sleeping time, to make this beautiful scarf. So the red and blue is from Eve Chambers Textiles and then this beautiful pink is from uh, Granite Creations, our Little Bee Kirsty. And I had it the this whole thing this whole thing is three skeins. One skein of the Eve Chambers and two skeins of the light pink granite creations. 300 grams of DK weight yarn used in 26 hours, including sleeping time. That's pretty good, don't you think? So it's super long. It's so lovely. You can wrap it around several times. I was thinking about making bags. I was thinking about a few different things. I was thinking about maybe trying to make a little waistcoat. There's so much fabric in this, I can't get over it. So I haven't done anything to the ends yet because I don't know if I'm going to keep it as a scarf or if I'm going to do something else. Um, yeah. Yay! So that's pretty. So there are my two finished objects. So, um, yeah, um, so at the marketplace at Edinburgh, at um, Thingy Majigger, what's it called? <clears throat> You know, thingy majigger, Joachim Abab, Atlantic Midscape. I came across this beautiful yarn. It's called Shunnock Yarns and it's naturally dyed. And it's beautiful. 75% merino, 25% nylon, campish, and carrot. Carrot, I'm assuming, is this one. Uh, and campish, I'm not sure what this one is. I think it's either logwood or indigo. I think indigo would be on, on the go, but it is naturally dyed shunnock yarns. <gasps> Look at her little logo as well, it's so cute! I love this. I was thinking, it's going to be a two colour shawl, I'm thinking about getting some more to maybe do a timely cardigan, two more, like a, another black, an, another, this is like a, a, a navy purple. Oh, it's just beautiful. And this is like a really light greeny yellow line, a super lighty line. It's beautiful. Oh, I love these. It's, this is coming up very purple on screen, but it's more of a navy. So it kind of matches the navy. I'm big into high contrast at the moment. I really like high contrast for stripes or color work or just anything really. I love it. So that's number one acquisition. Now there is going to be quite a lot of acquisitions in this, mainly because the people that I, I met at all these things and that I've been in contact with are just so wonderful. So if that's not your, your thing, um, I'm just going to do one more acquisition from Atlantic Knitscape and then I'll be talking about what I am knitting at the moment, so my current whips, and then it's kind of going to be stash acquisition at the end. So if it's not what you're interested in, no worries. Um, it, my podcasts aren't normally like that, um, but whatever. So the next one I've got was another um, naturally dyed, botanically dyed organic DK, non superwash from the moon and sixpence. Oh. So this is just this beautiful soft pink. I think it must have been dyed with like avocados or something, a botanical dyed, I'm not sure. Oh, it's so pretty. I'm thinking a cozy little cable hat. Wouldn't that be cute? I was thinking for my sister or for my mom. I think my mom would really like this. Really soft, it's just beautiful. So um, yeah, I'm really happy with those. So that's the moon and sixpence. And it's organic DK, botanically dyed. 100 grams. Non-superwash. Maybe not my mum then. No, no, she's quite good. She's quite good. 
Um, so, it was my birthday last week, but I didn't really celebrate it too much because I was um, going to, because of woolen, it was just woolen, 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 but my, um, my birthday was the 22nd of May and it was my last day of dyeing up yarn, which was really nice because um, it was just like a really nice, oh gosh, thank God, I'm all done. Um, my mum came over to help. She um, has discovered that she's not very good at skein twisting, but she's very good at cleaning. <laughs> so she basically did a huge bleach of the entire kitchen. Um, the kitchen is now the cleanest kitchen you've ever seen. It was very splattery, very, very splattery. So that's fine. Um, yeah, so thank you very much, mummy. Even though I don't think she watches the podcast. Too long, Grace. What are you talking about? Yarn. Oh, God, yarn, yarn. So let me talk a little bit about um, what I was... Yes, yeah, so what I've been knitting in the last couple of days have just been um, very plain, simple things. Um, I was going... Oh yes, this is what I was um, knitting inside in work occasionally. This is the Hitchhiker by Martina Bem, and this uh, this yarn is from Nora George Yarns. It is the Thistle colorway from Edinburgh 2017, and it's just this beautiful uh, tweedy bluey or uh, tweedy purple and green. Oh, lovely chartreuse green, really nice. So the Hitchhiker is a very, very simple one skein shawl project. You can actually keep going as long as you want. Um, I have it in a beautiful um, cottage number nine bag that she gave me for Christmas because she's the sweetest little circuit. So the cake just sits right in it. It's so handy. I think she measured a cake and everything. So it's just in there. Can you see? So cute. And look at the inside. So cute. And we'll put all the details down below of the shop where you can get this. So cute. Um, yeah, so, uh, oh, and I've got a little stitch marker from Marianne Prince, it's my friend Marianne, who lives um, down in Cork. It's beautiful. I love these stitch markers so much. They're beautiful. Um, yeah, so I just needed something mindless on uh, knit nights. Uh, I had a knit night there on Thursday just before Woolen, and it was actually lovely um, to go to that because I just needed to stop thinking about things although it was impossible it's been an it's been a really tough couple of weeks um i'll talk about that later so another um thing that i cast on on the way up to woolen is in my knitting goddess bag you don't have time to knit i don't have time to listen to nonsense and this was with some very very special yarn from my friend Shamika. This is Knit, Knit Picks Felici. I can't remember what colorway this is. But on the website, it should be the colors, right? You should be able to see the colors, but it's like this lots of stripes. And I've managed to get this far. <clears throat> I had a bit of an issue with, um, I thought I'd start them at the same stripe, but then I realized that I wasn't paying attention because I was in the car and I was so fluttery. Fluttery, pure fluttery but um, they're matching now. So uh, this white stripe was like about, about that long. So it was offset by like about six rows. It was just, I asked Instagram and then by the time I asked Instagram, I'd made up my mind. You know that thing where you, you say, oh, to make a decision, flip a coin. And when the coin is in the air, you'll know which one you're hoping for. Yeah, that's what the ask Instagram poll thing is. You know, people people were like evenly split and I was like well I'm like this <laughs> so I, I ripped it out and I'm just after casting back on and this is going to be uh, cinema knitting for when we go to see Solo tonight so I'm treating James to see Solo because he has been such a such a great help to me this last weekend um, and week and for um, the entire time that we've been together that's really nice <laughs> so Solo instead of jumper. <laughs> Poor James. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm. They're in. I'm using um, Barbara's 
Barbara who knit this shawl. She has these amazing little uh, tags here to tell you what's in your bags because sometimes you forget, you know. Um, so I'm also knitting this kit that I got at Woolen. And this is such a lovely kit. So this is the Peaky Cuts, Peaky Cats, Peaky Socks pattern by uh, Peaky Cat Socks. God, I can't get it right. By Marna from Ankoitin Bjog, which is Irish for the little cat, the little kitten. It's a sinister cat. <sighs> knit it, knit it good, knit it, knit it real good. Yes. So Sinister Cats are knitting it real good. Copyright on Koi Team Bjog. Now, I am annoyed that I forgot to get these coloured in. So I need to get some fabric pens and colour in some in my favourite colours, which are blue and green. So I'm going to do that. Um, she had them at the stall, but I ran around at the end of Woolen and I was just grabbing things I'd seen earlier. I didn't have time to do a thing because we were all trying to pack up and, and sort ourselves out before um, the social. So um, let me show you what's in them. I'm necking this coffee like nobody's business, lads. Whew. So the Peaky Cat socks were released on Friday at Woolen, uh, actually Thursday night, midnight at Woolen. Beans. <laughs> Can you see him? He's just there. He's running back and forth. He's trying to catch a fly. You can't see him probably. Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> he's not allowed out because he's just had the snip. So he's technically not allowed out for like 20, 48 hours. It's killing him. What are bees? <laughs> he's got... He hasn't got a cone or anything on. They just like sprayed the area with silver. So now he's got silver balls. <laughs> he's also been microchipped, so um, we will be happy kind of leaving him out a little bit longer and um, so people can find him then. That's all good, he's all safe now. So let's get back to the Peaky Cat socks. Oh, peace. Oh, Jesus. He's trying to catch a fly, I think. <laughs> Maybe there's a dragon up there. I'm sorry. Let's get back to business. <coughs> so this is the Peaky Cat Socks. Aren't they so cute? They're, I've got these shoes. I've got shoes that are quite like this that I wear to work. And it would be adorable if I could wear these Peaky Cat Socks. So they're made for Mary Jane style shoes or like low style shoes where you can see a little kitten over the over the brim of your shoe. They are a DK weight, a um, DK weight sock, and they are um, knit using socks. Yeah. Um, so I got a <laughs> surprise, surprise blue and green kit because I love blue and green. And the kit comes with the bag, the pattern, the yarn, and stitch markers. What's it say? Get your knit on in Grello. So she was so kind and you've got a choice between um, evil kittens or nice kittens. And she gave me both. So I've got nice kittens, which are these cute little ceramic kind of, um, they can remind me of um, anime kitten designs, like, you know, Spirited Away style. They're very, very cute. And then these are the evil kitties, which are just normal kitty faces because kitties are a little bit evil all the time. <gasps> but they're such good. Oh, and they're all progress. Oh, there's two progress keepers and then two, um, two ring, like jump ring ones. You see, two, two progress keepers. And that's the same over here. Oh, awesome. Thanks, Marna. You're awesome. Get your nila. I love these little satisfying so I hand wound the yarn because I wanted to cast these on um, socks yeah these are the colors so it's DK weight and I of course have not followed the pattern properly I hope I have enough yarn I don't know we'll see but this is how far I am Peaky cat socks. So I've just done 
some cat faces and I um, I did too many rounds. It's another extra long cat faces. They're more like black panther faces. Blue panther faces? So cute. Also at Edinburgh last year I got this stitch and cat kit um, which is a beautiful um, embroidery kit and she does these she's she started to do these for the shows that she goes to so she she gave me um, a, a, a Dublin one a, just the Dublin uh, map maker bit because um, I had all because all of the colors are kind of um, similar so anyway let me show you what's going on so this is the Edinburgh one I haven't done anything with it I haven't started it so this is Edinburgh and the map of Edinburgh the topographical map so you can actually embroider in all the different areas and and she shows you she's got a little really nice little um, kit like instructions how to do really cute ones she gives you some spare Ada or spare linen fabric to do that um, and she gives you all of the floss Fluffy floss, floss, floss. Um, and this is some DNC that I got separately, so I've kept it all together. And she gives you this beautiful thing. And I heard, I heard, was it Joanna, Opera Joe, call his gingers? Ginger is like a, a, a really derogatory term for redhead in kind of the UK and Ireland, I think. So I was like, oh, I, oh my God, is that what they're called? <laughs> but they're so cute. So that comes with it. With it. Um, and you also get the needles and some beads. Some beads and needles. So you get everything to just go and you get the two embroidery hoops, two different sizes. If so, if you want to do like large scale or small scale, like everything comes with this kit. It's amazing. I'd, I've never done embroidery before and I have some kits <clears throat> but I've never really um, I've never done it I bought the kits on a, on a work on a spur of the moment because she was having a sale and I was like this other lady and uh, I was like oh, no, no, no. so I decided to start yesterday and I'm basically just coloring in it's just like stitch by color it's really satisfying so satisfying I think it's even if I just do a few little bits, I think it will still be lovely and I'll hang it up. Um, I want to, every time she goes to a show and I'm there too, I want to get one of these. Because it's lovely. So this is the Dublin one. So on the back here, you can see what I've actually done. <laughs> Which is yesterday. I just did a satin stitch. I don't really know what I'm doing. It's embroidery more than cross stitch. Um, I love it. So that's what I've been making. Um, over the past couple of days and it's actually so nice to chill out a little bit so I'm just gonna go through um, woolen then so and leading up to woolen um, I hadn't been podcasting I, I did a I did a podcast I released a podcast on Atlantic Netscape and then I I released a, a podcast on woolen and that was actually mostly what James had recorded which is really funny and I edited it up and just threw that up really quick because I I wanted people to see what it was like and see how lovely it was because um, it was so so lovely oh, it was the best place to be so the weekend that was in it was quite intense <laughs> sorry beads is after doing some you can probably see him now. See him there? He's been hopping over that ledge for... <laughs> Beans. He's gonna trash everything. Oh my goodness. Oh dear. Anyway, what else? <laughs> He's just nuts! <laughs> over he's such a twat <laughs> okay concentrate Please stop distracting me it's really rude <laughs> okay so well in so the weekend that was in it it was of course the um the weekend of the referendum the vote to repeal the eighth amendment was um held on friday 
Now I had already voted three to six, three to four weeks before by postal vote because I knew I was not going to be in my constituency because I was at Woolen. So um, I had already voted. I had started doing a lot of campaigning um, about a week, two weeks before the vote. I first spoke about the repeal uh, movement in a couple of podcasts ago. Um, actually, it was from Marna from Ankoitin Bjog. She inspired me to start talking about it. Um, we needed to break the silence of what exactly it involved. If you're interested in learning a bit more, you can go back to my um, you can go back to my vlog titled Woolen and Serious Talk. Um, I didn't want to put repeal the eighth in the title because I didn't want a ton of pro-life pro-birth trolls to attack me, which was happening quite a lot. Um, thank God it never happened to me uh, because I don't know if I could have emotionally taken it. There's a lot of horrible stuff that was being thrown around and it was a really dark mood um, coming up to the referendum. There wasn't as much hope and happiness as maybe we can look back on the marriage referendum, which was the referendum to um, include uh, gay marriage um, in the Constitution of Ireland um, to, to stop, it, stop people being prevented from getting married if they loved a person that was not the opposite sex. So there wasn't exactly that sort of happy mood. Um, it was super nervous because pe there was horrible images everywhere and a lot of people who came to Woolen uh, in the days before the referendum who came into Ireland <clears throat> were seeing these images that we'd been living with for months and they just were horrified and I think I'm every time I pa like they're all down now thank god because it's just they were horrible. They were shaming, they were um, distressing, they were talking about babies being killed at six months. <laughs> I was like, stop using that word. Oh, anyway, so it was really distressing. It was really stressful. I was crying pretty much every day. I was so nervous about everything and mainly for the reason that if the, it, the amendment was not repealed, I was going to have to leave my country on moral and safety grounds because I am at the age where I could have children and there is no chance, no chance that I would have a, have a child if I had a choice, which I, which I didn't. If I, I, there's no chance that I would have thought about having a child in a country where I didn't have a choice, in a country where my own uh, health was disregarded in favour of a fetus, um, which is what was happening. Um, anyway, I've, I've explained all that in the previous podcast. Um, so <clears throat> coming up to Woolen, I, ha I started canvassing. I put on the big, the big um, vest, I went to training, it was really inspiring and helpful and everyone in the Limerick Repeal team, the Together for Yes Limerick, um, were so amazing. Um, they had set up a, a kind of a, a hub for repealers in the city centre where you could go in, there was counsellors there, there was chocolate there, there was tea there, there was badges you could pick up, there was people you could talk to. Um, you could take training there, you could undergo like, oh, it was just such a supportive place. There was loads of couches. I literally just went in there a couple of days to sit and knit and just be around people that were open-minded and body positive and just so nice. Oh, God, they were so nice. And they kept me going, really. Um, so um, I went out canvassing two nights with them and I went out canvassing in parts of Limerick that I would have previously considered very rough. I didn't know where we were going to be canvassing the nights I just showed up. And I am astounded at my own, what's the word? Oh, uh, what's the word? Where you think people aren't nice? Prejudices, 
So basically, I was prejudiced. I, I still am. I mean, we all are. To say that you're not is stupid because you are. I don't care. <laughs> You've grown up with different prejudices in your life. And that's okay, guys. We need to recognize them and say, do you know what? It's kind of weird that I think that. Why do I think that? Oh, because my mom thought that? That's stupid. You know, like... <laughs> Anyway, so I went canvassing in these areas that would have that I would have previously considered very rough and um, I would have considered them to be uneducated and I would have considered them to be very no very on the no side They were 68 69 percent. Yes The doors that were answered there was never any rudeness. There was never any uh, aggression everyone was really like nice to like talk about it they were delighted to see us they um a lot of people said that they were so excited to vote they'd never voted before this had got them interested in in their own lives and their government and what they say i had one man just one that said sure the government are going to do whatever they want i was like that's not the way politics that's not the way democracy works <laughs> you have to stand up and say what you want to do but there was no change in his mind so you don't bother really but there was one young young mother who was there with three children around her. She, she was younger than me, I'd say. She was about 25-ish. And um, she opened the door and then she was really nervous. And then she opened the door and she saw that we were the Yes campaign and she smiled so widely. And she was like, I'm so grateful that you're doing this. Thank you so much. I'm, this is my first time voting. I'm voting for my children. I'm voting for me. I was like, oh. Tears, you know what I mean? And this might have been a woman that I would have been a little bit cautious about if I'd met her in the street. I mean, canvassing has opened my mind to different people and God, I'm such a prejudiced, you know, I, well, I still am, but at the same time, I'm so glad I got out and started talking to people and engaging them in different things. And some people didn't really want to talk. I was like, that's fine, have a lovely evening. It was beautiful weather as well, both of the days that I went out. But um, I managed to um, change a couple, maybe convince a couple of people um, to think about things that they'd never thought about before. Um, and hopefully I managed to get them from an undecided to a, a soft yes. And hopefully they voted yes. Um, so that was oh, just amazing. Just amazing to go out and, and talk to these people talk to everybody that every door that I came to we just talked to and um, I got some very interesting gardening ideas <laughs> and nice doors I was like oh I like this door and I have I have very strong opinions on letter boxes now I'm like Ugh, letter boxes who designed them cut the arms like I've got wounds this one wounds Cheeks. <laughs> So um, I canvassed, I also, um, so, oh yes, I forgot to talk about, um, so anyone that has personally given uh, any money um, through, the pay, through the PayPal uh, donation button, through um, a buying a pin from me, through any different way that you've got in contact with me and sent some money over for the Together for Yes campaign. So anyone that was outside of the country that was giving money to me directly to go to the Together for Yes, I couldn't do that because that is um, technically uh, illegal. You have to be an Irish resident to donate to the campaign. So instead what I did was I um, donated that uh, individually each one of your different sections uh, went towards bringing a an Irish person home to vote so um, anyone that sent some money I sent on to the home to vote page and every single person that I personally helped has texted me uh, with pictures of them at home at home just outside the ballot box thanking me and therefore thanking you for helping them to get home to vote yes to repeal the Eighth Amendment. That is the most direct way that I could donate, uh, that I could use that money, and I'm so, I was in bits. If you want to look at all those home to vote things, oh, my heart. So um, any money that I made from uh, the badges, if you bought a badge off me, um, that went to uh, directly to Together for Yes, because Together for Yes is able to accept money if you've sold something. So. Um, yeah, 
that's the best thing to do. So the Together for Yes money went towards online advertising, it went towards posters, it went towards information sessions and um, uh, then taking the posters down afterwards as well because at littering, we don't like littering. So so that was all, That's thank you so much. I think I, I was giving monies pretty much direct, whenever I got it, I sent it directly because it was urgent. We needed that money uh, to go exactly to where it needed to go at that time. I didn't save up and then send it all in one go. Um, I think we raised over 300 euros. Thank you so much to everyone who, who did that. That was amazing. Um, every little every little cent counted thank you so much to everyone that donated <clears throat> now we still have a um, a lot of work to do the legislation is not through yet we need to make sure that that is pushed through but i think that the politicians see what a huge majority voted for, for to repeal and they're trying to push through the legislation quite fast so that's brilliant and uh, we need to include clauses such as preventing people from um uh, protesting outside uh, hospitals or GP practices or clinics that needs to be included in the legislation so we we have a lot of work still to do um, and we also have a lot of work still to do in Northern Ireland Now, Northern Ireland has much stricter laws uh, than Southern Ireland or the Republic of, Republic of Ireland Northern Ireland does not have mar equal equal marriage it um, also has much stricter abortion laws people have been convicted uh, in Northern Ireland. People in Republic of Ireland have not been convicted but they have had that threat of uh, of conviction. They have had that, that law is there to say that you can get a 14 year jail sentence um, for uh, procuring an, an illegal abortion in the country. But you can leave the country to have one. Such a hypocritical thing. Beans is back. Beans is back. I'm just gonna leave him there. So, um, but Northern Ireland, it, women have been convicted in case you don't know, Northern Ireland has not had a government for the last year and a half. The government has basically devolved. They just decided that, I don't know exactly what happened, but they do not have a government. They are being directly ruled from Westminster at this moment in time. But of course, the, they, the English government, the UK government, does not want to directly rule them. So they're basically just being ignored. Um, so direct rule was... Um, it's, it's a bad thing because it, you know they they were their own country. They wanted this dormant. They wanted their own. They wanted to control their own fate. But at the moment, they're not. Um, there's no government there, so they're not doing that. Um, I learned so much about it at at the weekend, um, and I'm just letting you know that if you are in the UK, you have the power to help the women of Northern Ireland and the people who can have children in Northern Ireland who can get pregnant. This is very serious talk, Beans. Um, so a playful day, um, Kate Sullivan has a beautiful blog post and lots of ways that you can help if you are a UK citizen. You can write to your, um, it's not TD, is it TD? Write, write to your government person. It's TD in Ireland, but I don't. I think that's that, that's in Irish. What, what it is in the UK, I've to, totally forgotten. Anyway, you can write to your people who have, make the laws, and you can call for that. You, they, they are there to do what you say. They are your representative, and if you think that women in Northern Ireland should be punished for tragedy. For fetal fatal abnormalities, for cases where they don't want to be pregnant, um, then you have that right to, you have the power to do it. Um, we in, down in Southern, Southern Ireland don't really have, because we're a different country, we don't really have the power to, I don't know what, what I can do for Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland, um, the women of Northern Ireland uh, did come down in buses <laughs> to campaign to to canvas the streets on the border. They did so much work, and now they need they did so much work to help us, to help us, and now we need to help them. Um, but if you are in the UK, you can do it. You need to do it. You need to write to the government to tell them that this is unacceptable. It 
just is. Okay, Northern Ireland is part of the UK. It is. It does not have a government at the moment. No bills can be brought. The funding is drying up for different things because nothing is being agreed. There's no, nothing is happening up there, which is atrocious and horrendous. But um, Theresa May doesn't want to do anything because the DUP are part of her government. She doesn't want to, she doesn't want to annoy anybody. And it's a very, very tense and fragile situation because Brexit and it's just a disaster but it needs to be sorted out we can't just ignore it you know we can't just let it like pretend that it's not there it is there Northern Ireland has women in it has people in it whose lives are suffering they're suffering and it's not acceptable and we need to sort it out head over to a playful day I'm gonna link it down below the blog post where she talks about it and ways that you can help because she knows way more about this than I do she's been campaigning for this for a long time and she's been helping people with the abortion rights campaign and if you are interested and if you want to donate and you're not from the UK or if you're from the States or if you're in Canada you can donate to the abortion rights campaign and help um, those women um, that way that is the best way to do it at the moment if you're outside the country gosh that was a long rant but I just needed to say it because repeal, it's been repealed. Oh yeah, have you heard? It's been repealed. <laughs> oh, where was I? Sorry, I go off on rants, bobbles. That's where the bobbles come from. So the Friday was the first day of Willen and that was the day that everyone was voting. And the all the yes badges, all the yes badges, the tall badges, tall is Irish for yes. Um, I don't have any tall badges left <laughs> so this hat if you don't know is a pussy hat that um, was designed by the loveliest yarn co in the UK <sighs> it's a pussycat hat with repeal on it and it was covered in badges I absolutely covered it in all the badges I got a ton of them and these are the ones that are left because I was giving them out like nobody's business. Oh, Marna also gave me a little smash the patriarchy pin. <laughs> she snuck one on there. So there's loads of photos of this hat all over the internet from Willen and from the repeal the eighth. And I'm so glad it is because I need to add on two letters here, E and D. Duplicate stitch I'm thinking. Yeah, birds. Excuse me, I'm busy. The starlings are being noisy. Have a great time. So I need to add on ED onto the side of this. I think I'll frame this. I just can't get over it. This is made of Donegal tweed sock. Donegal sock. It's so soft. I was handing it around. It's so soft. Um, yeah, so this is Fab Huns for Yes. Fab Huns together for Yes. This one is uh, the Abortion Rights Campaign, Free Safe Legal. So Bernie gave me some of this, uh, these three uh, and she bought them as part of the abortion rights campaign. Um, and it's done. I can't believe we can stop repeating. <laughs> so happy. Um, yes, so, ah, yes. Just so happy about this. <coughs> so, Day one of Willen went so well. It went really well. It was um, because of the referendum and it was a Friday. I think it was steady, but it wasn't manic busy. It's also the first time that the festival has ever happened. So it is um, bound to grow. You should come next year. <laughs> but it was actually lovely on Friday because I got to chat to everybody, you know? I got to chat to people. There was time to to um, say hello to people I'd only ever met on the internet. People came up to me and said they watched the podcast. I was always, I was already so emotional, so I was just like, <coughs> so everyone got a hug, regardless if you uh, wanted it or not. Soz. I'm fighting for bodily autonomy and I'm like, just hug me. <laughs> Terrible behavior. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I got, um, have a look anyway at the vlog because James was doing vlogs all day and I was like what's he doing because I was busy like talking to people and oh so great um and all the yes badges oh. um I just want to say a massive thank you to uh, Nadia from the Cottage Notebook podcast and uh Lisa of course um from this is Knit. Lisa uh, Lisa and Jenny and her mom and her dad and um, I want to say thanks to Emer and um, 
Siobhan Hackett and Bernie, Bernadine, Bernadine. Did I call you Bernie earlier? I think I did. That's really rude. Sorry, Bernadine. And then Joe was also there. Oh, they had just a fantastic team. Oh, and Kristen. Oh, Kristen and her mom. That was really nice. So they had a fantastic team of um, volunteers. Oh my gosh, they were angels. They had these blue t-shirts on and they helped us <clears throat> bring all of our stuff in. They helped us break down. They were bringing us coffee. Oh, Gina came by. She was bringing us coffees. Oh, thank you so much to everybody that helped out because it was just amazing. I know that was like, that was a pretty intense couple of days for you guys as well. Um, so I really, really appreciate the volunteers and I hope you got lots of goodies and um, I think you deserve uh, goodies, serious goodies. Like contact me if you want a discount in my shop because you deserve it, honest to goodness. Um, yeah, my neighbors are just waking up. I'm outside and we got this new gazebo, which is lovely, which means I can be outside and not fry like an egg in 10 seconds. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, the, the first day of the festival was wonderful. I met some wonderful people. Um, who came by? Uh, I'm mixing up the two days, but I just wanted to say hi to everybody. Oh, Siobhan came by with her beautiful, um, her beautiful uh, shawl that she made out of my yarn. That was really nice. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss everybody. Absolutely everybody. There was a oh, there was this adorable guy that came pat came by, young guy. Oh, I can't remember your name, but thank you so much for coming up to see me. I, you said you were really nervous. I'm so sorry if I made you nervous, um, but um, we got a massive hug, didn't we? So that was great. Thank you so much for that. That was really lovely of you to come up and say hi because I think I met you at the knitting and stitching show last year. God, I can't remember your Instagram name, but. Um, I remember you and I remember your face and I remember your lovely jumper. Okay, so I think they're finished. I think they're finished cutting their lawn, but you know, you never know. So what was I talking about? I was talking about all the people that came up to me on Friday. Um, I can't remember everyone, but you know, it was really nice because everybody knew where I'd be. <laughs> <laughs> was on the map so people could find me and um, I had so many people say that um, I was so busy that they didn't get a chance to come up to me and I was like dang it but also yay I was busy yay so um, yeah so then on the, the Friday night or the yeah the Friday night then um, we were going to go into town into Dublin but I was so much more tired than I thought it would be and it was right in the center of town, Dublin and I was like oh I don't really fancy an hour bus all the way in you really don't so um I decided just to, we just decided to stay in the Premier Inn and have dinner um and then um we'd hang out at the bar with Gabriella and Carlo and um the this is Nick girls with Nadia and um Lisa and Jenny and her mom and dad and Helen from Curious Handmaid was there as well, as well as some other lovely, lovely, lovely um, people who were staying in the in the place. It was really, really awesome. I think who else was there? I was very drunk at this stage. So at this stage of the night, we were waiting for the exit polls to come in. There was the, the, the voting goes from 7 a.m. in the morning until 10 p.m. at night. And then the exit polls um, come in at about half 10 and half 11. And there was two exit polls that came out. One um, was the RTE poll, and then there was another one as well. And they came out saying that the vote had passed at 60, 67 or 68.9 percent so when those polls came out I think I was on my fifth glass of wine <laughs> and I was sitting we were having a chat with Jenny um, for whose townhouse yarns and uh, her dad Liam who was in charge of Twitter we were just talking about everything and anything and um, Exit polls in Brexit and in um, the presidential election in America were completely wrong. 
So we were totally not expecting this one to be right. We were like, no, let's not celebrate until we hear the final vote. Let's not do it until the final vote. But um, turns out they were really, really, really right. <laughs> the yes side won by a landslide and it was coming in all day the next day. We got up, um, uh, we we went in and we start, we, the show opened at about nine for people who had classes and then uh, 10 for the rest of the people who wanted to come into the marketplace. So we had so many people come up to us and saying, congratulations, I was like, not yet, not yet. And I was just scared of admitting it and then being crushed, 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 crushed. I couldn't believe it. I just, I wasn't ready to believe it. So, um, it was amazing it was amazing 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 james was on james was on you know constituencies on twitter watching how, how many come it came in at the same time and and i was just chatting to everyone saturday was much much busier buses of people came down from all over ireland which was great they came down from the north they came up from the south they came over from the west they came from everywhere it was so lovely it was much busier we did a really really re we had a really good day um Helen Stewart came round uh, the not, I think she came round on the Friday. Yeah, she just came over for the Friday. Um, Hannah from Corner of Craft came over. That was amazing. Her video on on Willen is lovely. It's really nice and concise. It's really really nice. Um, Tracy from Passionate Spinner was also there. There are some of the podcasters that were there. There was also um, a couple of other audio podcasts which I can't remember. As the chainsaws went on, I decided to take a little knitting break and um, I'm knitting the Peaky Cat socks. And if you can see here, I'm knitting it outside in. So that section has been knit outside in and this side has been the other side facing. So if you watch me when I'm actually knitting now in a minute, you'll see that I've actually just turned it inside out and I'm knitting on the side that is farthest away from me instead of the side that is towards me. Uh, this just allows a little bit probably microscopic difference in the gauge of the floats that are going around um, it just gives you a little bit more stretch I've noticed anyway um, it's not really any different if you can see I'm just working from the opposite side of the circle so I can see what I'm doing from the inside um, and the outside is kind of you know you don't really see that anyway so so that is that and uh, that was a nice little way to spend the 15 minutes of lawn cutting so back to the podcast okay so the day has moved on a little bit some people are finished their gardening um, but I just want to talk a little bit more about woolen um, before I'm interrupted but what I might have to do is just separate this into two and do it somewhere else um, it's a beautiful sunny day gosh it's gorgeous so let me talk a little bit about um oh, i'm really distracted now oh there was one lady who came up to me and she was absolutely wonderful i was wearing um my woven cardigan and the, it was annette hmm Björgard. Your God, she's Danish. She's a potter and she makes these beautiful pins. She's AB Hand, uh, AB Hand and Holt, or Ab Hand Holt. I'll put the details down below, but she made this beautiful pin. It was like a ceramic pin saying Knit Girl. It was really, really awesome. It was really nice. Um, so thank you so much, Annette. I really appreciated that. Um, yourself and your, and your daughter, I think, came. So that was really amazing. So, oh, what did I get? I don't think I'm going to do a haul video. Um, I just want to talk a bit about um, some yarn specifically that I'm, oh, I don't know. I want to, if I talk about one thing, I have to talk about all of it, right? I think I might do a separate haul video. I did a bit of a haul on Instagram, on my stories, but that's gone. So I might do a separate haul video altogether and give them the full time that they need because each and every piece of art that I got is absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a separate haul video. Um, 
just for people who if, if they want to see it then great if not then you don't have to they don't have to watch it because i know sometimes i get a little bit anxious about oh how did they do that how do they spend so much money on that and i'm like well <laughs> you know everyone has different budgets everyone has different um abilities and interests as well some people aren't very you know they some people save up all year to go to these events and uh, i i kind of went a bit mad because james gave me my birthday money which was very nice so yeah very exciting actually it was christmas money and birthday money because um james was going to give me the money for the loom that i bought um but actually i told him actually don't give i bought it myself and then said oh you can give me the money and he's like well when do you want the money i was like uh around my birthday around willing <laughs> so it was just my loom money uh which went into yarn so I want to talk a little bit about the uh, the yarn that's up in my shop at the moment. Huge update, over 130 items. So many pretty fluffy things. Um, so this is a sample. <laughs> I've got a lot of fiber gone up actually. Uh, this is some really interesting, vibrant fiber. It's um, Masham. Uh, it's a masham uh, fiber. It is um, quite uh, rustic. It's, it doesn't have a super soft, slick handle. It has more of a woolly, proper woolly handle. Um, it is, um, I have spun some up. It spins really, really easily. It's really nice fiber to spin. Um, I have spun some up with some Romney um, and I'm planning on doing a little um, a rug with it. I think it's going to be nice for a rug or some slippers perhaps. Mm, and it just it picked up the colors so beautifully. So that is there. They don't all have individual names. I think James named them because we were throwing stuff up hard and fast. I didn't name all the colorways of, of these because they're mostly one of a kind. Um, there is some super, so that's like the the wooliest, the rusticest, and then this is the softest. <sighs> so this is 21 micron merino. It is so soft. It's dyed in a gradient, going from uh, this light pink to, or, sorry, this light yellow to pink, uh, to kind of a mustardy mauve, and there's some blue in there as well. Um, a little bit of a hint of a green. Ooh, that would be so, that's going to be really subtle yarn, a really subtle yarn. That's going to be nice. I think this blended with something darker and deeper would give a really interesting. Hmm. I had a lot of people coming up interested in felting as well. And this yarn is, this fiber is perfect for felting as well. And you get so many different colors all in the one braid. It's really quite, quite handy. <gasps> so in my sock what i had a sample of the wonder woman knit up in this this is the red center and ray um, and they're quite lovely together and then i did dye up this on the turn which was really popular up at knitscape and i think it goes really nicely in there <gasps> for like an autumny color with this bright pop you need something bright with these kind of subtle not more subtle but these kind of darker colors you need something bright to make them stand out otherwise you kind of just sit there and they all muddle into one so you do need a pop of something that'd be quite cute quite a nice three color shawl mm, stripey stripe shawl beans is crying because he's not out here what a big loser I've got some gradient cakes. I only had four left and I think two are already gone, but I think this one's not gone yet. This one is uh, Firestar. This one is, I've got two of the oranges and two kind of bluey ones. And um, so these are knit up, ready to go. You can basically just knit straight from these. You can knit two at a time socks or one at a time sock, but you know that each sock will be identical, which is, makes me happy makes me very very happy they are 75 25 they're super soft super lovely and because they're in the cakes already they were in a double sock blank and I pulled it out popped them into little cakes ready for you um, that the yarn won't be too squiggly to knit from so that's handy if you're worried about gauge or anything 
Oh, I want to talk a little bit about this one here. So this is Spring Ivy. I've got another Ivy, which is more intense colors, but um, Albina from LB Hand Knits is actually designing a jumper out of this particular colorway. She came up to me at Willen and she was like, oh, it's going to be so beautiful. I was like, I can't wait, it's gonna be so exciting. She, th I think she's planning on having it out for the summer solstice, which would be so beautiful because aren't these the summeriest colors? They've got these like deep, intense greens and bright sunshine. Oh, and I think it's such a nice idea for summer solstice. So I head over to Albina, um, LB Hand Knits on uh, Instagram and um, she's on Facebook as well. Fabulous. Oh, she's fabulous. She had so many patterns at Woolen. It was amazing. Oh, so pretty. So then now let's move on to the DK weights. So I have a lot of this um, solid gold colorway and I'm addicted to this shipwreck colorway and I'm thinking some sort of fabulous brioche, something or other, cowl, neckerchief, hat, Oh my gosh. The great thing about brioche is you can really see each color. You know, there's a chance for each color to shine. I love that. Okay, so the um, chainsaws have moved off a little bit, but they probably will pop in, but I don't think it's too bad. So hopefully it won't be annoying you too much. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit more about my DK here that is available in the shop right now. So I'm just kind of obsessed with these colors at the moment, these kind of blues and oranges. Oh, this is a quite a nice three skein chunky shawl. That'll be nice. It's got the blues and the oranges. Oh, that's quite pretty. Uh, even just these. I love this high contrast stuff. That's lovely too. So this one is a uh, big Tom. And it's called Big Tom because it reminds me of, I don't know, for some reason it brings to mind um, when we were in uh, Victoria down in Australia and we went to this one bay and they were talking about Big Tom, which was the killer whale that used to work with the humans to like herd the whales into the bay and then the whales would help the, the whalers actually kill the whales. It's amazing. Uh, the story was just uh, Big Tom was the basically the guy he used to go outside the fishermen's like houses and like splash around to say hey there's a whale there's a whale we've got a whale for you and then he used to hurry up and run downstairs into the boats crazy stuff um, so yeah that's shipwreck and Big Tom which I think are quite cute together <laughs> and then I've got I've got a ton of solid gold I just love this color mm, so pretty um i also have a ton of um cotton socks in lots of muted muted summery spring pastel colors and i'm thinking garments three of these would get like a medium to large size um short sleeve top long sleeve top probably on a large gauge four would definitely get you a large to extra large with long sleeves and a long body really nice and there's plenty of that in that this is missed batch two so there's a couple of batches so um if you do order a large amount i will try my i will do my best my utmost best to get you the same batch if um they aren't exactly the same i will send you a message and advise you to alternate skeins i would al advise you to alternate skeins with whatever hand dyed yarn you ever buy um because it's too pretty not to get right um oh we're on to a floof and then there's one last thing a very special skein that i really want to show you so floof is my singles base it is a very floofy singles base it actually is quite similar to, it's a, it's a little bit thicker than fingering weight i would say or maybe it's just denser like fluffier um so it is 400 grams per 400 meters or 100 grams um, but it fluffs up quite lovely so it would actually knit up to I'd say a sport weight um, I do need to get a couple of samples knit up in this um, and I have a few people who are interested but if you are interested in knitting up samples for me do get in contact with me so this color is actually this color over dyed with this color which is why there's only one of these there's only one of these because it was a bit of a test and oh, pretty, 
pretty 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 so i think this goes perfectly with this brioche i'm just obsessed with brioche at the moment so um this is acid this is a one of a kind but i do love it and i think i might be bringing it in and then this is solid gold in floof which is the same um same color as the dk i'm just in love with this mustard quite lovely so that is floof and then um I've got a ton, like a ton. There's so many. Pop over to the shop and have a little look if you're interested. So many, so many, so many. So the one last thing that I want to talk about is my special woolen colorway. This is called Lynn. It is an Aran Waite um, Irish wool, Irish milled up in Donegal. It is the only like maximum Irish. This is the most Irish yarn I could get, I, the base I could get. Um, we don't really have a hand dyed business in Ireland. We have to order in from um, Europe or the UK. So when I got my hands on this, I was very excited. Um, this is um, an iron weight. It is 154 meters, 100% uh, non superwash, pure new wool, milled in Donegal. So the colorway is Lynn and it is um, some subtle, uh, there are two batches in this as well. This batch number two is a little bit more muted colors and batch number one was the best selling. And that one, I think I only have three left on that one. It has more um, vibrant uh, colors there. So they're separated on Etsy. So you can see what you like. But um, so the colors are based on the um, the logo of Woolen and the website, which are these like pale blues and mints and teals. And it's just... So the word Lynn, L-I-N-N, -I -N, is an Irish word and it means all of us, or all of us together, or our. Um, it's, a, it's a kind of a funny word. It's a beautiful word actually. And I love that they put it into Wool Lynn. So it's wool and Lynn. So it's like wool together, wool, woolly community, woolly togetherness that's the whole idea of woolen and it really did feel like that so much that's what everyone has been saying to me it's been so friendly so nice so inviting and there weren't too many nerves I don't think because it felt like I don't know I didn't feel any nerves I felt nerves coming up to it but then when I was there everyone was so lovely like literally so lovely so 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 I don't know if I've said enough have you got your drink ready for the so drink along anyway James has just gone to get Pim's summer day Pim's oh my god so pretty so 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 there are a few of these left in the shop special Lynn colorway exclusive so this won't be dyed again um maybe next year it might be brought back we'll see we'll see so it is a rustic yarn. It is not a cashmere. It's not merino. It is Irish yarn. So Irish wool. Um, there's a very interesting talk that went on uh, during woolen and it was all about Irish wool and the history of Irish wool. And it was apparently really interesting. I didn't go, but um, Dermid Cummins gave a talk that I'd say was quite similar um, at my retreat. So. I'm really interested to find out more about that. Um, uh, Nadia, who held the Yarn in Ireland panel, um, said that it was recorded and the recording did work out. So that will be coming up on the Cottage Notebook podcast, which is so exciting. That'll be coming up sometime in June. Give her a break. She's got a lot going on. <laughs> but I can't wait to hear it because I'm really interested in... They had um, Johnny Shields as part of the Yarn in Ireland panel. He's spinningwheels.ie. He's a spinning wheel maker up in Donegal. He is amazing. He came to find me. So I gave him some of my fiber. I was like, please take some, please. I love you so much. One day I'm gonna have one of his wheels. I might even go up and see if I can see how he does it. So cool. Then um, Carol Feller was up there, a designer. And then there was another woman. I cannot remember her name. She's slipping my mind at the moment. She's another designer, knitwear designer. Gosh, I can't remember her name. But I'm really excited to, to hear about that talk. Um, Kate Davies all, also did her um, fabulous talk. Um, uh, she did it in Edinburgh as well. She did. It was a reading from her book. 
um, all about her journey into knitting because she had a stroke and her her recovery from that stroke um, was a lot down to knitting um, which is super it just means a lot to hear about those sorts of you know the healing nature of, of knitting there was also a really interesting person um, doing uh, classes on somatic knitting and I'm really excited to actually I I'm going to book myself in for a Skype session uh, with her because that's exactly what I feel like I need <gasps> Pim, this looks like lager sorry I'm not complaining look he's got my little pims how much pims is in this it's normally not this dark a summer amount a summer amount the whole summer do you know you've just come in time yeah. because I've just finished the podcast. Oh. Do you want to say hi and bye? Hop in, they love you. Hi. Get in here right now. Hi and bye. So, um, yeah. So there was so many. So somatic knitting. I'm going to put down that, that down below. But um, I just want to say thank you so much to James mm -hmm. for being my. That's your nose. For being my um, my my booth buddy. Yep. My documentarian my my light in my life Ugh. Ugh, that's really gross i'm sorry yeah. take that back um yeah you were great thanks so much right. everyone good. loved meeting you it's good fun and also he was the tallest person there so his head like poked out so like people were drawn to me like a lighthouse that was my plan next year i'm gonna make you wear like a luminous yeah. hat at a ray someone who? i can't remember who someone we met she said i need to make some sort of like a babble yarn hat Oh yeah, a really big one. Yeah, the big sign on the top. <laughs> Out of this, I think. Yeah. What do you think? This one, Ray. Yeah. Oh, I think that's gonna work. Yeah. We're hoping to. I, w I really want to make some living with a knitter T-shirts. Would anybody be interested in those? Because I think they'd be so funny. <laughs> what do you think, James? Would you wear it? I'd wear it and badges. And badges? Oh, <gasps> badges! Oh, <gasps> little pins! Oh my God, I can do that now. I know how to do it. Oh, there's also pins up in the shop too. Listen, there's so much to talk about. I could go on for ages, but I'm just going to stop there. She I have will. no idea how long this is going to be because I stopped 50,000 times because it's a nice day in Ireland and we only get three of them and everybody's out with their chainsaws. So, yeah. I'm going to do a separate haul video because there's just too much. Too much. Um, and was that Sash? No. That's your letter. Bye. Some Sash? <laughs> Oh, show them that one. <laughs> James picked out this one. James picked out this one for himself. This is Gamer Crafting, Vader's lightsaber. He said it was, what, what did you say it was? Um, Very sexy, I think is the actual word. Sensual Darth Vader skein. Darth Vader after dark. Darth Vader after dark. <laughs> so these are gonna be a pair of socks for James. So you want socks now instead of the jumper, is it? Both. That sounds great. Both. Oh, okay, socks instead of jumper? Both. Okay, bye. See you later, guys. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you want to, you can like and subscribe the video. Um, liking um, really helps um, spread the word about the podcast. And if you want to subscribe, you can follow all the little journeys that I'm going on. The journeys that I'm going on soon, um, there are a couple of them. I'm going up to Project Baba in Athen Rai. I'm going to be demonstrating there with the guild and I'm going to be having some of my yarn there as well. So if anyone is in Athen Rai in Galway uh, around the 7th of July, I'll be there. You have to stop by and say hi introduce yourself get a picture um, because I love I love getting pictures of people and putting it up on insta fam because we're insta fams there's so much fruit in this oh yeah baby whoa this is so strong oh my god what time is it it's not even like 11 o'clock it's summer okay guys I'll talk to you later. <laughs>